Welcome back for the last time here at the European Yu-Gi-Oh! Championship, live from Antwerp. It's the final time. It's going to be amazing. We have an absolutely huge crowd of the European duelists all ready to watch this final duel. Yes. That is the energy we want to feel. It's incredibly exciting in here, and I hope all of you guys at home are excited for this. Marcus Patel versus Zio Mundi. It all comes down to this. Every duelist, 2,000 plus duelists, have all come together in this place to try and get where these two gentlemen have reached. And it's going to be amazing. So I'm going to ask you guys to roll this dice so we can figure out who is going to go first in this duel. OK, that's a seven. And that's five. Marcus, are you going to go first? Marcus is going to be going first. And so for the once in my lifetime that I've been able to say this sincerely, my friends, it's time to duel. I'm going to hand you over to our commentators. Guys, take it away one last time. One last time, welcome back and welcome to the finals of the European Championship 2022. Over 2,000 duelists gathered for the biggest ever European Championship, 12 rounds of Swiss and the first ever Yu-Gi-Oh! Top 128, 19 rounds total to crown in this last match, the European Champion. What a journey it has been. It's been an incredible journey. We have seen a lot of different decks throughout the weekend, a lot of champions, a lot of actions. And here we have a former UK national champion still undefeated. Absolutely. We have been waiting three years for this moment to crown again a European champion. And three years ago, back in 2019, it was when Marcus actually won the UK national champion. So it's such a good player and he's crushing it. Yesterday and even today, he didn't drop a single match. He is still undefeated, only with one draw. And what an accomplishment it has been. 17 rounds undefeated plus the draw. So 17 wins, one draw. Can his opponent, Zio, actually take it? It's going to be, as you already know, tier elements against Marcus Signature deck nowadays with this, this San Avalon Rika deck. How could we have predicted this? No, I mean, Insane. At the beginning of the, the tournament, uh, we had a meta deck discussion. We yeah. talked about how many decks there are in the current format. But I think none of us thought about this deck at all. Absolutely, we didn't, and Marcus is just completely crushing it. Uh, still, though, we got to give credit to his uh, opponent, uh, who demonstrated in top four, when I think everyone, everyone would have given it to his opponent, Lars. Uh, and uh, honestly, it would have been crazy to get a Sanaval yeah. and Rika <laughs> against Altergeist in the finals. Uh, still, he kept his composure and was able to bring it to a match-free, sudden death match uh, and take it to the the final so Zio also proving that he is not the underdog he is here to compete and even though he lost the Dyro we know that he's playing a few cards for going second no matter what it's gonna be an amazing match but without further ado our players are ready let's find out who will be the European champion And here they are. So, as we have seen in the previous round, Marcus Dak is extremely consistent. A uh, lot of ways to get to his combos. Uh, let's see if he will do it once again here. Of course, uh, Sunset Genius Loshi being the key card of the deck. Uh, and let's see Marcus and oh, and I might have jinxed it for Marcus. I mentioned wow. how consistent the deck is. He actually bricks game one in the finals. Wow. I think this was completely unexpected, especially because like Marcos deck, uh, it's super powerful. Just with one card, he can combo off. Now, what what a uh, heartbreak for now yeah. from Marcus? I think he's holding uh, 
impermanence maybe and uh, call by the grave let's see he's thinking about these desires though of course let's it through just a little bluff there but uh, if you're Zio, you are uh, definitely excited about this uh, call by the grave uh, still really good against the elements but what a start and here we see reinforcement something cool to mention is that he's actually playing uh, dark crafter a car we have not yet seen I, I don't even remember the last time we saw it honestly yeah. back in 2010 probably so a throwback to say the least and once again i really like the fact that uh, we talked about this a lot during the weekend uh, how the elements players relied on uh, different engines but still here we see the danger, danger, yeah, danger Bigfoot. Bigfoot. Let's see this one. You really want to snipe. So let's see if Marcus Luck uh, can at least uh, uh, be even. But yeah, as he has seven cards in his hand, unfortunately, he's not able to roll a dice for it. Uh, he should just pick one uh, the good old fashioned way, I guess. But he's going to actually roll a dice, uh, which uh, kind of <laughs> triggers me <laughs> mathematically speaking but i guess it's uh, fine enough uh, and uh, he will go for the call by the grave actually uh not the greatest one uh, i don't think marcus is actually maining entrops right um just the just impermanence, impermanence. Yeah. yeah so a good one and now another danger in the form of mothman so a uh, pretty good start here from zio Obviously focusing on getting the curious on the field and on, let's see. Ooh, this car's the right. Wow. Wow. Rhino art. And it has rivalry. Wow, but rivalry is there. Wow. He has the rivalry. Um, he plays three copies of the car in the main deck, which is very powerful. Um, Zio doesn't have a way to counter it. No, absolutely. You can never count the Marcus out of it. It did break going first, but still, thanks to the rivalry, completely shutting down uh, his opponent. And now any top deck uh, is gonna be great from Marcus. Uh, yeah, now he really needs a monster. Any yeah. monster. He has so many good top decks. Uh, let's see if he gets any. Like looking at Zio's deck, uh, uh, the way to get rid of the rivalry is just the. I Galaxy think he got Lose. the Loshi actually. Okay, let's see. He goes for uh, field spell. So of course we want to be uh, seeing it on the field. Uh, here is for you guys, uh, Rika Konkon. Uh, Ooh, wow. and what a start! <laughs> That's what he was holding. Here, as you can see, Rika Goncon would have needed if you have uh, to tribute a monster, you can just use uh, your opponent, uh, and this is a, a huge deal. Let's see, he gets the snow. Oh, merely. Interesting. Okay. Well, definitely the snow here is very good, especially because, like, he milled Merly, so he can trigger it. Yeah. Um, now, Marcos is considering it because, like, he can add the, yeah, the glamour. Yeah, he's uh, in a really good spot now. We thought we he might be in tribal. Yeah, he has the call by, as I mentioned in the round. This is uh, tough now. Uh, this is absolutely. Great stuff, even the talent. Uh, wow. Very good yeah, stuff. Gets here. rid of the Dark Lure, yeah. and this is looking like uh, Marcus, even though he had a tough start, uh, is just getting there with that rivalry. Wow. Yeah, I just really needed a car. Um, we said it before, he was uh, looking to pick up one out of his deck, and then here comes the Glamour, which, which chases the sheet um, yeah. from his deck. Here it is, completely in control, he's gonna read it, uh, and uh, we just showed you guys as well. And yeah, here goes for the Glamour, which essentially allows him to draw, uh, and uh, rather search two cars from his deck, uh, and it is gonna be the Loshi, the one and only. You 
ever thought that a deck running in 2022 free Vanilla Monster would have been able to get this far. Wow. And now that's the point uh, in which the deck uh, goes even yeah. crazier. Because now, now with the Dryas, uh, it gets to search uh, this Unvent Sawing. Uh, and now I think this is one of the main reasons why Marco's deck uh, has been so powerful this weekend. Uh, because like basically with one card, uh, he combo off. You know? Yeah, he doesn't need much to go off. Uh, he really had an unfortunate start, but the rivalry was there and... Uh, it is one of the reasons, though, why he has been so successful. Rivalry, a card that shuts down both uh, the tier limb and deck, and is really annoying against Sprite, and uh, he is main in free. So we saw it actually in the winning deck uh, at the North American event, where Ansel Aguero actually did the impossible and won the twice uh, yeah, the North American uh, event. And he was main in three copies of Rivalry. Yeah. Now we are in Europe and again Rivalry winning the final of such a huge event. Now with the Yasmin comes another Dryas yeah. and uh, he goes for the healer as well. Yeah, this is a great uh, interaction because uh, not only does Jasmine uh, special summons from the deck, but when you gain the life points with healer, you get to search uh, an additional plant monsters, and this is so much advantage at this point. Yeah, so basically every single card of Marcus' deck is a plus one. Yeah, <laughs> pretty much uh, <laughs> every card in his deck uh, either searches or special summons from the deck. Uh, And yeah, he goes uh, through with the second effect from Jasmine. He tributes uh, the healer to special summon a plant from his deck. Uh, and now gonna go all in with one of the actually one-offs uh, in his deck, which uh, he didn't uh, use that much uh, yeah, uh, when we were watching him, but the, the it's still an interesting uh, extender, yeah. yeah. It's the Primula, as you can see. Uh, he could uh, later on go into a rank four play even, uh, but uh, this is... Such an incredible show of his abilities from Marcus. So he searched the Rika Princess. We were talking about this before. It's one of the craziest uh, Rika monster. Uh, yeah. Like. Uh, and honestly, if you're Marcus, are you even worried about anything? I guess uh, just uh, going through your combos and uh, he got to see the end. Yeah. He knows that there are. Pretty much two useless cars, one of them uh, being another danger. And as predicted, uh, he does go for the XYZ play. Yeah, which is the Queen. Yeah. This is Queen Strena, as you can see. He just gets uh, one plant back from the graveyard. And then he actually gets to potentially overlay into the rank 8, uh, which is so, so good. Yeah. Here he comes, uh, so when it's sent back, uh, he goes for the double, run Kate play, and uh, this is so, so strong. Honestly, great show off wow. uh, by, by Marcus. He's not even hesitating a little bit, such a, such a good player. Uh, here comes uh, one of the most often summoned uh, Link monsters by Marcus, which yep. is the, you know, the Bengal answer. Uh, the card is pretty much uh, like, let's say, a compulsory evacuation device. Yeah, it's pretty much compulsory on steroids, I would say, because it gets uh, back from the graveyard. And now Zio is going to pick up his card. Uh, it's going to be almost impossible for him uh, to fight back in this board. and. Uh, uh, I know, such an upfield battle it feels like. Yeah, gonna yeah. set a monster, pass back, and uh, uh, Marcus can now easily OTK in the next round and uh, could be just one game away from uh, becoming uh, a European champion. Yeah. I think he enters battle phase directly. Yeah. Just goes to the battle phase, attack, and that's it. Yeah. And shake, and uh, Marcus takes game one.
what a match uh, already and uh, it looked as if Marcus Leck let him down in the finals going first and only setting three back rows but in the end the rivalry world was there and it actually won in the game uh, his opponent had an incredible explosive end with a lot of dangers but rivalry is just uh, too good too good of a card and now we have to look at the side decks and the favorite it's even more marcus yeah because like if you're zio and uh, you're now in the final and you're playing against this kind of deck uh, it's not even easy to set deck but there's the deck devastation uh, virus. Absolutely. We saw it even against Altergeist. Uh, DDVU, so deck devastation virus, absolutely amazing against uh, most decks in this format. And of course, even though he probably didn't think of uh, Sanaval and Rika when preparing, it still is really strong against the Marcus deck. So yeah. we're surely going to see that. We might see Barrier. I think it's pretty underwhelming against the deck. Uh, maybe the Droplet, uh, but maybe it might even go crazy inside him and going second cards. On the other hand, Marcus uh, has a very good side deck, uh, pretty much half of the cards for going first and the other alpha going second. So when he goes second, uh, what do you think he's going to bring in? He has definitely the Pancrotops uh, alongside with the Ultimate Slayer, which uh, in my opinion I like going uh, for sure. Also has the evenly match just in case. Yeah. I mean, uh, I so really like stuff. it because like uh, it has everything it needs, you know. There's uh, like some stuff uh, that's basically generic, you know, Ultimate Slayer, evenly matched. For going first, he has the Deep Barrier and the Appointer of the Red Lotus, which uh, have been sided in against, uh, um, for a lot of players during this weekend. But by going second, I think he has a huge advantage. Yeah, I think uh, pretty much uh, similarly to some sprite decks, uh, the goal should be to set up a Snow Engrave and then the Meta Noise, so at least you have two ways to stop the normal summon or the low chi from it in the field. So that's the main goal. Uh, and to stop that, Marcus has evenly matched an Ultimate Slayer. I think uh, they are both uh, really thinking about what to put in. It's not going to be an easy one, uh, but with Didi Vu on top of it, I think it's going to be close. Something uh, worth mentioning, though, is that Marcus is playing Mystic Mine in the main deck. Yeah. And uh, his opponent uh, maybe not expecting it. Yeah, definitely. And uh, we saw how dangerous Mystic Mine is and uh, cost games. Absolutely. But without further ado, our players are ready. So let's go back to the table for game two and finding out if Marcus will be the European champion with a Switch 2 -0. Here they are once again, so I do see a tactic talent uh, and the rest of it looks like it's engine for Marcus uh, while on the German player. We start things off with a field spell and that's already really nice. Yeah, we get to see the Pearl Reino from uh, Zio. Yeah. Um, maybe this time we'll get to see some more stuff from uh, you know the tournament's deck uh, yeah it searches the arena hard yeah the really cool interaction as we saw it could be even going for the zero boros once he knows his opponent deck uh, it should be pretty hard to deal with it outside of that i guess uh, he's not playing the window package but he does have uh, of course the, the usual uh, stuff uh, plus uh, apollosa i see a super polymerization and that's interesting because super polymerization uh, should be next to useless against uh, uh, marcus deck yeah uh, definitely one of these cards that uh, doesn't really hurt because like in every single other matchup uh, yeah definitely but uh, not here so for now, usual stuff, uh, we get to see, of course, Kyleido are it, and uh, uh, let's see these meals. I think uh, he's missing some dangers. I can't quite figure out the rest of his end. But you really want to eat, uh, you know, the curios, yeah. get into the snow, and uh, if this is not one of those ends, then uh, I might have worrying news uh, for uh, Zio. Yeah, he's actually considering it. Um, he goes for it. Yeah. Nice. And here, as we can see, 
Kid Carlos doing Kid Carlos thing, you could search for the meta noise. I actually wouldn't mind it. Uh, putting uh, the Loshi face down is a huge deal. So let's see if uh, Zio agrees with it. He's considering it, but no, he goes instead uh, for the other trap card. So interesting stuff. Uh, he gets to the Suliak, which is uh, still really good uh, to stop uh, the, the Link activating its effect right away. And now we get to see the Mothman before actually setting the trap card. So interesting. And he gets uh, the, the Gar Graffer. Interesting. Ooh. Okay, nice. Of course, it wasn't that useful knowing that he had to go for the Rhino, but now he gets to draw a card uh, looking for any of these other danger monsters. Yeah, he really needs one in yeah, this and situation. Yeah, he needs a tier yeah, element he needs as something. well. something, yeah. To be able to use uh, the Kit Kalos. Thinking uh, quite a bit about this one. It might not be the most straightforward end, actually. And he doesn't, wow. Maybe another danger no it just sets two cards to his face down wow so he's left with the soliac and the uh, super poly do you think danny should have considered going for the field spell on his own kid carlos so. yeah, he could have wow and play is back to marcus and now a deck Ooh. devastation virus actually comes into play but he has uh, the unexpected die wow and the rivalry once again my we might have a quick one on our ends. The you unexpected think, uh, die is so strong. You think is there a chance to wait for Marcus to summon and then activate the deck devastation virus? So basically you just uh, wait the right moment or you basically just activate it straight away? Yeah, I think uh, there were definitely some merits for waiting there. And I think the last card is uh, Glamour maybe? Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. So the last card in hand is the Glamour, which is uh, also really good because it's basically a reinforcement of the army, but this is huge. I think Marcus has it in his pocket. Uh, this is a, such a strong uh, start. Because, yeah, like, Deck Devastation Viren hurts, but uh, uh, the unexpected die will do the job. Yeah. What a start uh, from the UK player. We mentioned how Deck Devastation Virus could hurt, but then I'm really questioning uh, Zio first uh, line of play with the field spell. If he was really looking for, uh, you know, getting lucky with the Mothman, uh, I think you take the mil five every time. Yeah. So. so I think he said the Super Poly and Captain and the Soldiac. You think so? Could be, maybe. Yeah. So now he gets the pedal, which is essentially a two for one. He gets uh, to search and then most likely special summon, but uh, for now he's free to do whatever he wants. Let's see. Because the super polymerization, as we mentioned, doesn't do much. Most of these cars are gonna be, you know, uh, plants uh, and uh, it's tough to use it efficiently, I feel like. Yeah, he's now going through the Zarn Vine yeah. uh, sewing. Um. Yeah, sewing once again uh, coming up. Uh, and I think he's checking, uh, you know, attributes, types, just to figure out whether he can match Dragon here. And uh, uh, this will actually be complicated because Mad Dragon and Garura both requires the same attributes. Uh, yeah. And instead, uh, he would love it if it was same types but different attributes, which is not the case. So... Tough, tough for Zio. Still, especially because, like we saw, Marcus also has the triple tactic talents uh, with the rivalry. Um, I think it's going to put up a huge field. Yeah, this is a. Uh so much uh, that he can do uh, and, and i don't think uh, there is much that zio can not really yeah because the only hope was maybe if he was holding uh, uh, one of the tiers but now there is very little interaction yeah. from uh, from his opponent again checking just types and attributes but i think marcus uh, is gonna play around it as much as he can and then here comes the mudan the field spell as well yeah Mudan comes up, he can tribute a plan to special summon it, and then he searches the, the fuel spell, which we already see is the Concon. 
And yeah, this is a very, very strong opening by Marcus. And I also have to say that I, I think the activation of Didi Vu in was too early. Yeah, uh, we were talking about it. Maybe if you wait for your opponent to summon and then activating is better. Maybe you are afraid of being, uh, I don't know, like lightning storm, but then you basically just chain it, right? No, you so wait. Uh, you wait every time, yeah. So that's the only concern that I have with this. But outside of it. I I don't think it would have mattered too much. Marcus had a really strong end, but maybe if he got a little too excited and went for uh, the Glamour and then activated unexpected die on Losi, then the Didivu is like four cars. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know. Maybe a little bit of uh, uh, regret uh, from uh, from Zio, but now we are good. just gonna see what we saw in the previous yeah. game. Marcus uh, doing uh, its uh, unique combos, getting back this uh, compulsory like uh, Link monster. Yeah, that's what the deck does at its best. Um, and again, it has so easy access to the resurgent that uh, Sio is going through it, just to be sure, but uh, yeah, it's going to attack over Mothman. Yeah, it attacks over, it still has that compulsory like effect where you can bounce uh, uh, back a car from Zio and uh, this is tough yeah because he's gonna set the rivalry no, and yeah we can, especially we know yeah. about the rivalry yeah. so rivalry completely won uh, the game one from Marcus and he has it again here in game two and we know he has the Saldek in end so he is left uh, top deck right yeah Maybe not as impressive as in the previous game, but still a really solid uh, turn by Marcus. Uh, and now we see a second copy of the uh, field spell by Zio, which is gonna be decent because at least he has a chance to try and uh, uh, snipe uh, the rivalry. Yeah. Yeah, and he really hopes to mill some good cars now. Yeah, he needs, a, he needs a miracle and he needs it quickly. But as mentioned, uh, not the greatest of turns yeah. uh, as well from Definitely. Marcus. So. Yeah, I mean, we have seen uh, yeah. like better plays, but didn't have much uh, after being, uh, you know, the defeat. So. so let's see. He's considering his line. He knows about the rivalry. He has to play around it. Uh, and he does go for the Rhino, so... Of course, it is a warrior. So, Marcus uh, will be quite careful about how he's dealing with yeah. that. Yeah, you can see just Zio being quite uncomfortable in this spot. He definitely did not expect to be playing against such a deck, and uh, he has to figure out his option, which seems quite limited at the moment. Looks I like he's going to activate, yeah, the yeah. Super Poly. He goes for the Super Poly. He has waited long enough for it to happen, uh, but then do you think he could have waited it for the field spell to actually destroy the rivalry? Yeah, that could have been, uh, I think, the case. Because now he gets to, yeah, send the Ophinis. But now he has a worm, you know? Yeah. So the, the rivalry is so strong at the yeah. moment. Uh, uh, the cool interaction with this is, of course, that he can be using it. And uh, I guess you are forced to use the field spell, though. Yeah. I don't know. It's, it's an interesting interaction. I think Marcus will go for the rivalry. And here it comes. He changed the Ooh. fairy tale. But yeah. He changed the, the fairy tales, no. So he gets to summon fairy tales, no. And yeah, 
now he would have uh, been forced to resolve the fusion. Of yeah. course he can't. Uh, thinking about just sending a card and passing back to his opponent and uh, this is gonna be tough. In the end phase, Marcus is getting back uh, his Rika monsters from the graveyard and uh, again, rivalry just showing why it is this, this powerful. Uh, we have to say that uh, <laughs> There's nothing uh, like uh, that uh, Tsio could have done. No. Because like he needed something but uh, did draw and then, uh, I mean, the rivalry hurt so much. And now basically Marco knows that uh, Tsio is left with the Saliak. So he's pretty much able to do and continue his combo. Yeah, he just does what he was doing uh, in the previous uh, turn. He's free to keep uh, comboing off. Uh, and as you can see here, just gets to use the other effect with the Glamour, adding Chew. And I think here he can really consider uh, to put up uh, the field he needs to seal the game. And now we can see the interaction with the field spell being activated to tribute an opponent monsters just like it did in game one. He gets to bring on the field, potentially two level 8 monsters to actually go for the XYZ summon and he will actually go for it. Yeah. yeah. We get to see the Rika Queen once again. And uh, this will be so much damage coming towards Zio. Yeah, I think he needs to make some uh, mats here. Yeah. Yeah, he detach. As mentioned, what a journey it has been for Marcus uh, going uh, all the way undefeated with just one draw. And it seems as if he will be able to become your 2022 European champion just a few moves away from closing this one. He does it's go for the Jasmine. And gets yeah. to use the fact uh, you can banish uh, cards up to the Link Summon and get it back from your graveyard. And now he gets to tribute for Jasmine. Special summoning a plan from the deck. Uh, and once again, using the effects to overlay with it and summon the same as in the game one. And this is looking like it's gonna just be his game. Let's see. Considering yep. his option, uh, finally dropping uh, his XYZ. And now he enters battle phase. Is there a response? There is the handshake. <laughs> What a match, what a match it has been. Congratulations to both. Uh, what has Markin even done this weekend? No, I mean, 18 win, one draw, zero losses. Yeah, absolutely <laughs> astonishing result with San Avalon Rica. Unbelievable stuff from Marcus, uh, who is now a two-time champion, UK national champion 2019, and your new European champion in 2022. What a show off, it has been an incredible match. Uh, and I gotta say, what a way to keep your composure. Game one, he goes first. We talk about how his deck is super consistent, uh, sets free and pass, and you gotta feel sorry yeah. for him. I mean, but what is the MVP of this final? You wanna say it? Uh, no. It is a trap card, spoiler alert. I mean, rivalry of the Warlords, once again showing up strong as in the Alter Guys matchup we saw previously. Unbelievable. I mean, he did the job, and uh, we might have been scared about Mystic Mind, but instead, uh, rivalry, both in game one and game two, shut down completely Zio's strategy. What a way to finish this event. Absolutely, what a blast it has been, honestly. And uh, as I mentioned uh, just slightly before, uh, we got to actually for probably the first time in a while play the North American uh, event and then the European Championship with 
very different formats, uh, but in the end, uh, surprisingly, we got at least uh, somewhat of a similar result in the sense that Ansel Aguero is the American champion and he played Warsaw, maining uh, free mine and free rivalry, and Marcus Patel is the European champion, also maining mine and rivalry. So still, it seems as if those cards uh, keep staying on top of uh, the best performing decks, uh, but again, uh, Marcus, uh, just congratulations to you, you have done something uh, which is absolutely incredible, going through 12 rounds of Swiss, uh, top 128, uh, but now, thank you guys again for being with us for the whole weekend, uh, it won't be probably the last time we get to speak to you, but now we have to go back to Ed and Marcus, the man, the myth, the legend maybe, for his winner interview. Attention duelists, give it up for your new European champion, Marcus Patel! The crowd is going mad for this, this is absolutely amazing. Here is your trophy, please give that a lift for us, sir. There you go, your new European champion! This is so exciting, Marcus, tell us how it feels. Uh, crazy, um, I was so shocked that I went undefeated in Swiss that I thought you know, I have to get unlucky somewhere, but I did, yeah, it was just my day. It certainly was your day, a day of becoming a European champion. So one more time, give it up for Marcus Patel, your new European champion! Thank you so much to everybody who has been a part of this entire process. Thank you to Konami for hosting all this. Well done to every single participant, all 2,000 plus of our duelists. Thank you to my wonderful commentary team. This has been absolutely amazing. I've been Ed Templer, your host, and I look forward to seeing all of you in our next live event. For one more time, give it up for Marcus Patel!